Hello, brothers and sisters. As we begin 2023 in a new year, let me first of all wish all of you a happy new year. But before we move into 2023, we want to uh, take a moment and talk about 2022, the significant events that took place uh, last year, and the things that uh, you did, not what I did or the people in this building, but what we all did together. So first of all, let me thank the local union officers all across the United States and Canada for the work that you do. You don't get enough credit, just to be quite honest about it. But I know how hard the work is that you do representing your members. And it's tough to trying to resolve problems that your members have, and thank you for what you do. Those of you who are uh, retired and still active in your local unions, you have a great job to do too. And you have done a magnificent job over the past several years as we fought for pensions and health care. So let me move into a couple of other issues here if I might. I think about the fight that that took place in the West Virginia legislature last year. And those active safety committee members who came to Charleston and testified and lobbied their representatives not to change the laws in West Virginia, you did a great job. And once again, it just shows that when a coal miner testifies about what coal mining is about, it's a whole lot better than some guy who's getting paid by the coal company has got a thousand dollar suit on trying to explain something they've never done, right? Thank you for that victory. But we know this is gonna happen again. We'll be back in the legislature trying to protect people's health and safety. But thank you for the fight from last year. And if they wanna fight again, we're prepared uh, to do that. Some things happened last year. We finally, were able to start having events out into the field. For instance, we went back to the Farmington Memorial Service in person. I want to thank the District 31 leadership and the local union officers for that. And I am always amazed at how many people still come to this event. When I first started doing this, the widows and uh, the children of, of the miners who died would be there. Now we've gone through another generation of family members, and this event just continues to grow. We went back to Robina uh, this past year, and I want to thank District 2 and, and their wonderful leadership there for putting that program back together. Brothers and sisters in New York who work for Remington, who uh, have been fighting for a collective bargaining agreement, they went through a bankruptcy at uh, Remington, and then we didn't know if the uh, plant would reopen, and it has reopened, and we've been trying to get a collective bargaining agreement with the new owners since. We have gotten a lot of our members back to work, and we're very happy about that, but we need a collective bargaining agreement to protect them as we move forward. And it was a great show of solidarity as our members traveled all the way from Pennsylvania up to Ileon uh, to protest on their behalf. And thank you uh, for doing that. And then I think about Labor Day. We did Labor Day in person, and then over the Labor Day weekend, we dedicated monuments to those brave souls who marched at Blair Mountain back in 1921. And I want to thank our uh, friends and our partners at the museum down in, in Matewan for all the work that you put into this to see that this happened. Thank you so much for that. But I think the one issue that we've been dealing with here and you've been dealing with and every member of the United Mine Workers has been dealing with for some time now is to attempt to get a contract for our brothers and sisters who work at Warrior Med. Last year, on April the 1st, made one year that these workers have been out on strike. And now we're just a month or so away 
from the second anniversary of this strike. The active miners who pay into this strike fund, the retired miners who paid into it for years and years and years, you've allowed us to pay over $27 million in benefits directly to these strikers. Where would we be today if these miners didn't have the benefit of that strike fund? But it's the working miners and those miners who have paid into that strike fund since 1983 that's allowed this to happen. We pay the high strike benefits in the labor movement, and I'm proud of that. We provide health care to the families of these striking miners. But I think I should start out by saying thank you to the strikers who have withheld their labor this long and done without the income that they had while working at Warrior Med. And you sacrificed greatly. I've met so many of you. I think I've said hello to every single striker more than once on my visits to Alabama. I also want to thank the wives. Sometimes we forget it's not just the workers who are on strike. The wives are on strike. The children are on strike. The entire family unit's on strike. Who would have thought that Warrior Met would have been so callous to have said to these workers, well, thanks for the billion dollars that you gave us to save this company back in 2016. But we're not giving you anything here. If you think about it, a dollar fifty per hour raise does not in any way approach to concessions that's been made here. Workers have stayed in those mines and, and worked 12, 13 hour days for five years to try to save this company. And they did save it. But no appreciation from the top management here. So those people who are scabbing, you're just temporary workers, by the way. Uh, there's going to be a a uh, point in time when we proudly march right back into these mines and reclaim what's ours. Now let me just thank all of you who've traveled, for instance, to New York and to protest in front of BlackRock's building. And some people said, well, that won't work. BlackRock is the, is the largest investor in Warrior Met. Guess what? Because of you going to New York and standing out there picketing, that entity, the most powerful financial institution on earth, they took our issue and said, but to Warrior Med, you guys are wrong. <laughs> now, the people that own your company telling you that, everybody's got a boss, and it's the people who are invested in this company. They told this company that they should settle this dispute. They voted against Warrior Med's recommendations at their shareholder meeting and voted with us. Last year, Region 10 of the National Labor Relations Board based in Atlanta, Georgia, said that the UMWA owed Warrior Met $13.3 million. All of the labor movement came together at our urging. And they said, this is ridiculous. This is absurd. We're not going to put up with this. This isn't the entire labor movement. And guess what? Region 10 of the National Labor Relations Board changed their mind and said, this this fine should be about $400,000, which is exactly what we agreed to do to start with. So to all of the labor movement out there, thank you for the help you've given us, not only on this issue, but on many others. Let me say one more thing about the labor movement. And individuals across this country have donated about $3 million to this strike, and we give every dime of that to the workers. And thank you for not only your help, at the board, but what you have done to help support this strike financially in other ways. Thank you. And let me give a special thank you to my partner, Secretary Treasurer Sanson. He has been right there by my side at every single tough, difficult decision we've made. And he's been part of this bargaining team trying to secure a collective bargaining agreement on behalf of these workers. So, Last year was the anniversary of first anniversary of this strike. We're approaching soon the second anniversary of this strike, and Warrior Met needs to get 
the message. We're in this to win a collective bargaining agreement for our members. We've been right in the middle of all this transition that's taking place across this country having to do with energy. We're fighting tooth and toenail by the way, to save every coal job that still exists out there in Northern West Virginia, Alabama, and other locations, because every one of these jobs are precious. And we have fought in the halls of Congress, we fought with, in, in the White House, we fought at the EPA for you, and that fight are raging on. But there's one thing we have to realize. From about 2010 to 2020, our calculations that we do here in this building is that 40,000, 40,000 coal miners lost their jobs in this country. Now think about that. For every coal mining job that exists, at least four other jobs are created. That's another 160,000 people lost their jobs. But we have not been able to stop the closure of these coal fire power plants. But we fight every day to keep them open. But still yet, about 200,000 people tied to this coal industry lost their jobs. But we're fighting to create jobs and saying to the country, if there's a new job to be had, give it to a laid off coal miner. Let's have a plan here for these coal miners who are still uh, working, who are young people. We want to create as many jobs as we can in the coal fields. And if you live in West Virginia or Pennsylvania, you probably see where we've been involved with this company that's gonna open up a battery manufacturing somewhere in the coal fields. Now, some people say, well, I don't want those jobs because they're not coal jobs. Somebody's gonna do that work. They're either gonna be in China, which they should never have been to start with, or they're gonna be in some other state. I suggest to you, that they ought to be in the heart of the coal fields and laid off coal miners ought to be first in line for those jobs. And those jobs will be union jobs, paying good wages, good benefits. So people who have lost their jobs in the heart of Appalachia will be able to stay in Appalachia. We're out there every day, right today, organizing. We're organizing right now the state employees throughout West Virginia. And I want to thank the rank and file miners who've come out and working on lost wages to do that. So we're here trying to create jobs, organize the unorganized, protect the jobs that you have, along with all this other work that we've been doing. We're gonna win this warrior met strike. We're gonna organize the unorganized. We're gonna make these mines as safe as we can make them. And we're still the shock troops of the American labor movement. Thank you. You've made the UMWA. Your forefathers made it the biggest union in the country. We're fighting to continue that legacy. God bless all of you.